guys this is me shahriyar mubarak on my channel hasan ali with another episode of my take well israel continues to bomb across gaza strip mainly eastern rafa northern gaza and central gaza and bombing again on northern and central gaza means that they have totally failed in their ground invasion in their previous ground offensive and ground operations in across gaza strip now they are going in Rafa district to do a ground offensive as they have started eastern in eastern Rafa and more than around 400,000 people have left Gaza since the leaflets and warnings were given by the IDF to the people who are seeking refuge in Rafa district around 1.4 billion out of that around 400,000 people have left Gaza and they are going to places where uh, which are already heavily bombed and destroyed southern gaza or northern gaza there is nothing left there there is no buildings there is no refuge uh, refuge available to the people who are going back to northern and central gaza or to the southern gaza as i earlier told in my videos that al masawi and the part of han yunus are totally cramped and they are full there are already people who are seeking refuge and have pitched their tents and living on the coastline in al masawi and it's already full there is no place for people to go there and people who are leaving rafa in hope to find refuge elsewhere in northern and central gaza bad news for them is that bad news for uh, for them is that israel is again pounding northern gaza and central gaza the yesterday bombing of jabalia refugee camp proves that they have no intention of sparing any part of gaza they are systematically in high, uh, uh, in the face of inhala in in uh, the using now the face to inhalate uh, in, in, in inhalation of the gaza strip they are completely breaking gaza into the rubble into the debris into the garbage into the dust there is nothing there those people who are returning to northern gaza will receive their death either by israeli bombing and the famine which stalks the land which looms which looms large on the land because there is no aid reach or israeli forces didn't allowed the aid to enter in northern gaza because they knew people would return to northern gaza when they will start their rafa assault and despite warnings by international community by americans despite america posing their one of their uh, arm sales stopping the uh, shipment to the israel israel still go ahead with rafa's action because their plan is genocide their plan is genocide of gaza their plan is genocide of palestinians of gaza their plan that gaza becomes totally inhabitant for the people of uh, people of palestine they want minimum people to live in gaza they want people to go to sinai live in the desert uh, desert part desert city uh, desert of sinai egypt they do not have any intentions of keeping people in gaza especially palestinians if they want they will create their own uh, establishment settlements the uh, settlements that they are building in western gaza they are also now wants to build in gaza and it's their plan former prime minister of israel naftali bennett have clearly told in many of his interview with western media and western journalists in podcasts he is openly saying that it is our plan to occupy gaza's territory and make sure palestinians leave gaza systematically destroy everything of palestinian heritage palestinian history in gaza and making sure that no one wants to stay in gaza no palestinian wants to stay in gaza we want them to go to sinai and live in tents the former prime minister the former prime minister he was the prime minister just before netanyahu again came in power by installing this uh, fanatic right wing government he himself the naturally banned ex prime minister is saying that we want to occupy and make over establishments over settlements over security checks there in gaza who wants to keep 
over forces in Gaza. So it clearly means that they do not have any intention of leaving Gaza and they will not leave Gaza and no ceasefire will happen in Gaza. They will keep on killing people in Gaza. Around more than 35,000 people have been killed. Around 15,000 of them are children. 10, uh, 11,000 of them are women. And the data which uh, recently issued by UN, I don't think so that data is right. The health ministry of Gaza is providing the right data because if you do not take the word of health ministry of Gaza of Hamas, then how can you verify? Their data has proved accurately since the last four times when Israeli bombed and uh, wreaked havoc in Gaza. Their data often or generally proves right. It is the admission of World Health Organization. So I believe the data, 35,000 people have died in Gaza and 70% of them are women and children. As we know, it's a graduation season in American colleges and universities. And uh, must salute the students who held these Palestinian solidarity protests encampments across the America, across 46 states, more than 100 universities and colleges. They, uh, they make their voices heard. They ask their universities to call for ceasefire, to call for divestment from the Israeli businesses, divestment from the businesses who are making profit of these deaths of Palestinian in Gaza. So hats off to these American students and hats off to these students in Europe and United Kingdom who came out in support of Palestinian people when in many of Muslim countries, none of student organization, none of any universities, students came out in support of Palestinians uh, of Palestinian cause, of Palestinian lives, of asking their government to break off all their ties, especially countries who have recently established their diplomatic ties with Israel, they should have cut off. I'm talking about UAE, I'm talking about Bahrain, I'm talking about Oman, I'm talking about uh, Muscat, I'm talking, uh, I'm talking about these countries who have accepted Israel, Egypt, Jordan, they should have cut off their ties, but they didn't. So I salute these students of United States of America, U, uh, EU and UK who came out and helped and raised voice for the people of Palestine make, and make their, put their career role online, put their studies online, put their graduations, put their degrees online. But they stand with the right. They stand with the justice. They stand for the people of Palestine. They stand for the they stand for the justice of Palestinian people. As it's a graduation season across the American campuses, Duke University students boycott the commencement speech of Jerry Sinfield, a com famous comedian who openly defends Israel. But scores of students left when he starts speaking in Duke University as he is the former student or a student of the affiliated college of the university. Berkeley University, California students interrupt number of times the graduation ceremony by chanting freedom for Palestine, free Palestine state and asking for divestment. In UCLA student, at least eight or seven of them ask for divestment. Where were the shirts which ask UCLA divest from the Israeli businesses or the businesses who are making money out of this war. <clears throat> and UCLA students deserve more credit because they, for, they face the worst police atrocity, police action, police right, uh, uh, Americans right police, uh, state police of uh, California, they face the worst action from the police of California, of the state uh, state troopers of California, they faced the worst action. But they stood for the Palestinians, hats off to the USCLA student. <clears throat> and also in Virgi uh, Virginia, students boycott, walk out, commence the speech of the Republican governor, who is another pro-Israeli and genocidal supporter. They Virginia student, uh, the Virginia students, uh, Virginia students, university students, they left. Community students, community college students left. Israel, uh, Israel uh, police have arrested students 
in Pennsylvania University campus, around 33 of them in Cambridge, Massachusetts. They arrested 10 students and police have so far arrested more than 3,000 students across United States, across the 100 universities, across the 46 states. It's more than 3,000 students who have been arrested by American police for doing just peaceful protests, asking their universities, asking their colleges to divest from Israeli businesses, from divest from the businesses who are making money out of this war and who are is getting benefits of this war, especially the American war industrial complex. <clears throat> In Amsterdam University, the faculty professors walk, walked on stage a walkout as last week the uh, Amsterdam police bulldozed the student encampment who was sitting in with the solidarity, uh, which was sitting in for the solidarity protest for the uh, people of uh, for the Palestinians, that was bulldozed. And this week, the faculty of Amsterdam University have said a walkout. It's a big thing. Amsterdam is a place. Netherlands is a place which is anti-Muslim, anti-Islam. But people came out there across USA, across United Kingdom, across EU. They are not all Muslims students or students from Palestine or Arab descendant students. They are students across all religions, all countries, all creeds, all languages, all beliefs. They are supporting Palestinians. They are showing solidarity to the people of Palestine, Gaza. They are showing solidarity to the 35,000 dead people of Gaza who have lost their life since 7th October 2023 and they are standing for the Palestinian life and they are making sure that Palestinian lives matter. And I think it is shameful that none of our Muslim students in any university across Muslim countries, none of us arrange any encampments, any, at least any walk out any protest against Israel, against this Israeli genocidal war of Gaza, I have not seen anything. And it's shameful. A news report also confirmed that U.S. State Department admits that Israel used their U.S. weapon in Gaza, but still say it's not genocidal and Israel have not break any international humanitarian law. What else you require when you openly say that Israel is using U.S. weapons to kill people in Gaza? use their pressure bunker bombs or those dumb bombs which weighs more than 2,500 pounds they are using on the innocent children, women and elderly sick people of Gaza. Shameful. In a negative uh, neg prison of Israel, a whistleblower op uh, opens up to CNN, CNN and says the prisoners held since 7th October 2023 are living in inhuman, in dire condition and the most abusive conditions as they are held in diapers, chained to bed, their hands cuffed all the time and because of few injuries of staying in cuffs and chains, doctors have amputated the limbs of these Palestinian prisoners who are held since 7th October 2023. It shows how bad the situation is. As I earlier said that Israel's Gaza plan is just genocide. It's just making sure that no one wants to stay in Gaza and bombing Gaza in a, in a way that nobody stays in Gaza. And it is their plan and Israel is going for the genocide of Gaza. And if this continues, I have a bad feeling that this death toll figure will not end up around 50,000. It will end up around 100,000. And it could end up over around half of a million people dying and majority of them would be children and women, little children and women. But nobody cares in this world. The US did say that the plan Israel presents for the rough evacuation of the civilians is not credible, but they are still not putting their foot down. America needs to pressure Netanyahu to stop this genocide, to stop this madness. Otherwise, more children, more women would die in Palestine, Gaza. Long live Palestine, long live the freedom movement of Palestine from the river to the sea. Palestine shall be free. Allah Hafiz.